And last but not least is this guy, the basic kit. Uh, this is like a basic survival kit that is found in our aircraft. Um, amongst all the other gear we have, we've got this. Um, it's pretty heavy. I don't know, 20, 30 pounds maybe. Um, this contains a lot more that's in my, than in my LC vest, but it's not on me at all times. So it's a training aid. Um, so we're just gonna go through what's inside. And I can almost guarantee you, I will not be able to get this back in the box. On the real ones, there's uh, some duct tape around there to help seal it. So what is in our box of survival gear? Uh, one of the exercises we do actually annually here in uh, at 103 Squadron is we go on a survival X once a year. We just did it mm, two, three weeks ago. And part of it is spending the night out in the woods with just the gear we have. And we have to build a shelter um, in a matter of a few hours, get a fire going and spend the night out there. And we use a lot of the stuff that's in here. And in the morning, the instructors come and evaluate how well or not well we did. Um, there's also a lot of motivation to do well because it's cold outside and you want a good shelter and you want a good fire. So these are uh, panel markers. Uh, they're just big orange, pinkish um, kind of markers. You could lay this out in a pattern to help attract attention from passing by aircraft. There's several of them. Um, I'm not going to do each one. They can also be used to build a shelter, to carry stuff. Uh, really, you're only limited by your creativity about those. Next up here, this is a water uh, filter. Um, it's got a little pump. And a filter in there, uh, most likely a reverse osmosis style filter. And you could draw water out from, say, a pond, lake, uh, river, anything like that couple spare parts in there and you could slowly make clean potable water and it would go inside one of these bags uh, water is important to life this will not desalinate water so it won't work in ocean water but it will work in other uh, in fresh water sources this is the bug net uh, why I didn't take it apart in the other one um, I'm not gonna put this on and embarrass myself but uh, yeah, you just put this on and it keeps the bugs off your face. Super handy for, uh, for anything, right? Uh, you would have long sleeves generally uh, if you found yourself in a survival situation in the Air Force. So really the only thing left is your hands and this. This is also, you can wear this at night to help keep the bugs off you and keep you sane. There's uh, several of them here. Oh, I'm not taking this apart. This is a, uh, a net for fishing. Um, you can see it through there. Fish away. Um, like I said, I don't know very much about uh, fishing, so uh, hopefully someone on my crew would know how to fish. Cool. Same thing as on the Alcee vest, drugs. Your flavored drink crystals. Those are really good. All sorts of different flavors. It's not just one, it's many flavors it comes in. More drugs. Um, and bandages. These. So, these are candles. Candles can keep a sealed space very, very warm for a decent amount of time. If you built a snow cave and you had one of these candles inside, um, it would keep the whole place uh, maybe three, four degrees Celsius. Uh, in fact, one of the courses I did was an Arctic survival course where we had to spend several nights uh, in minus 40, 50 degrees centigrade uh, weather, plus wind, so like minus 60, 70 centigrade. Uh, we had to spend several nights and days in snow caves and igloos that we built by ourselves. And these candles or other little flaming device uh, kept the inside very, very warm. Turns out snow is a wicked insulator. And because these are wrapped in tin foil uh, in Canadian Forces, that denotes that these are in fact edible. Um, yeah, if you had to, you could eat one of these, can or one of these candles. Um, here, I'll show you a little closer there. Um, so this is burnable. 
or edible. Yep. Maybe. There's some candles that aren't edible. I might have gotten the wrong ones. I prefer these candies. That is terrible. That is absolutely terrible. Speaking of candies. More candies. More drink crystals. More candies. Nice file. Uh, there is an axe uh, somewhere else on the aircraft, so this will keep your axe nice and sharp in case you hit a rock or something. That's another uh, bug net. These are uh, more of the uh, pure tabs to, uh, if you didn't want to filter the water or your filter broke, you could use that. Again, the how to survive DIY guide, very, very handy. And the not a stove box. Survival situation, keep your duct tape, reuse it. You never know when you could use it to patch up something. Kleenex, super handy, maybe you're crying. Maybe your friend's crying. Forgot how to use your compass? Instructions on how to use a compass. Moving along, you have a sewing kit, you know? Maybe, uh, maybe you want to fix your uniform. Actually, sewing kit's pretty important. Any sort of tear uh, in your, um, your winter coat or something, you could patch it up with this and make it a lot more useful. Signal mirror again. Bug repellent. Super, super handy. I actually have this in my own personal LC vest. Um, bugs are insane around here. Fishing kit, we saw that earlier. Bicycle cards. Or, sorry, uh, playing cards, again. Boredom could be a part of uh, surviving. Uh, headlamp. Super, super bright. This one's uh, it's actually a pretty nice one, actually. I have this almost similar one at home. These are... Uh, These are matches. Um, and a striking plate. Fire is a very important part of survival. There's the striker thing we saw earlier. Compass to go with the compass manual. That aviation fire starting kit. Strobe light. These are called uh, hexamine tablets, or at least used to be hexamine tablets. They're, I think, now a different chemical, um, but we still call them hex tabs. It's basically like a fuel tab. You can just light this anywhere, and it'll burn with mi minimal flame, and it can heat stuff. You can also use it to start a fire, or if you had like a small little uh, tin cup, say this, or even, well, you'd need a few for this, but you could put snow or something in there, put one of these underneath it, and it should, in theory, melt it. Last but not least, uh, antiseptic isopropyl pads. Yeah, well, they'll probably burn. And of course, some sort of a multi-tool. Handy, can fix stuff, can make stuff. And that is all that's in our basic kit. Uh, so everything you saw here is just some of the equipment um, we have aboard the Quorum There's a lot more, and I hope in successive videos to show you more of the gear, especially the Sartec gear that we have. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, yeah, write them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them or find out the answer. Uh, some of the information I may have, I've presented to you may have been wrong, um, and I'll be corrected on it. Uh, in fact, I'm really not sure those candles are edible anymore. Uh, someone might have just pulled a fast one on me. Um, but yeah, uh, again, 
are ALSU techs, part of the Canadian Forces. They start off as aircraft structures techs. They're the ones who deal with all this equipment. They're the ones who prep it all, and they're the ones who give it to me. Uh, I've got full confidence in the gear they gave me. They do an amazing job here, and I assume elsewhere as well. Um, and all air crew uh, undergo a water survival course, or sea survival course rather, land survival course, and some do the Arctic survival course. I've done all three. Uh, that would prepare us for the uh, remote chance that something bad were to happen uh, if we were to crash. Or in case of the Cormorant, um, we may have an indication that something's really wrong with the chopper and we have to set it down in the middle of the field, in the middle of nowhere. And it could be several, uh, a day or two before another Cormorant or repair party could come out there and, uh, and mend the helicopter. So we would be out there in the middle of the woods for two, three days. Uh, no injury, no crash, nothing, but just with this to uh, make do. This is what's next up. This is my, uh, well, this is actually not my helmet. This is someone else's helmet. Mine is uh, currently being worked on. Uh, made by Gentex Corporation. Uh, model is uh, HG56P, HDU56P, sorry. Uh, common across many NATO militaries uh, and civilian aviation worldwide. Uh, right here, that's where you can snap in some NVGs. Uh, we have a clear visor and a shaded visor. Megaphone boom, ear cups, helmet, Velcro for, uh, for the battery pack and whatnot. It's kind of a helmet, it's good, it's good, it works. Uh, purpose of it is to help attenuate sound. You know, you got big, big loud helicopter. So you got these big ear cups there and a helmet that keeps sound away from you uh, as well in case of uh, a mishap or an incident. Uh, it'll keep your brain intact. And hopefully uh, the important part is not just preventing uh, brain damage, which is kind of important, uh, but keep you conscious enough that you could uh, egress from the helicopter should it be a pretty hard hit. Next up on the table is this. This is my immersion suit. Uh, in some cases you see me in a flight suit, in some cases you see me in a big orange suit. This is the big orange suit. Uh, on the inside I wear this. This is just an insulative uh, layer. And uh, on the outside is this guy. Big, kind of, we call it an immersion suit. Some people would call it survival suit. Six in one, half dozen in the other. Um, it's got holes for your head and arms, which is kind of convenient. Uh, you know, something special, that special about it. Uh, they are as uncomfortable as they look, um, you know. Uh, this is apparently some sort of a kind of moisture permeable membrane, so it can keep water out but allow moisture to permeate, uh, which should in theory keep you cooler and allow you to sweat. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, the socks are made to or are, are glued on, and they're for each pilot has their, or each aircrew has their own specific size. Uh, our LC techs look after these; they test them every so often. Uh, in fact, I can tell you that mine is due for inspection on the 27th of April this year, uh, and they'll either test it uh, for leaks or just do a visual inspection. I'm not quite sure what individual testing they do, uh, and should they find any holes or, or something wrong with it, they can actually patch it here in house. Uh, the same guys who look after the life rafts and that vest, uh, they'll look after this. So yeah, every time I'm going over uh, water for a fair distance or going to go do some water work or boat work or something, I put this on. Uh, the water around here is spectacularly cold. Um, not only will this help extend my survival time in the water, it'll also prevent cold shock, which could uh, uh, basically immobilize me should I find myself upside down in the helicopter in the water. It'll allow me to just egress along with the training and that EBS and the rest of the gear you saw should allow me to make it out of the helicopter should I find myself upside down in it. This is a B-25 bag. Don't ask me what B-25 stands for. I think it means below 25. Uh, in here is a lot of extra winter gear and other gear. I also have an overnight bag in here that contains change of clothes, some civilian clothes, toiletries, cell phone chargers, uh, and anything else if I find myself, say, in a hotel room in Goose Bay. Uh, but the bulk of this bag is winter coats, winter gloves, winter boots. Um, I think I even have a set of snowshoes in here. Anything that might help me deal with the cold environment. And that's not only in a survival situation, 
let's say we're operating out of a Callaway and I have to do a walk around, I have to do maintenance out of it, or maybe uh, we set down somewhere uh, to go help a plane crash and I have to help move uh, stretchers uh, with the Sartex, um, I would be able to assist. So, oh, I don't want to go this in too much, but here is kind of like my overnight bag. And yeah, snowshoes. Um, these are kind of unique to this area of the world, I think. Um, the reason, they're very flat, and that's the reason I like them. There's no teeth or anything, so I wouldn't use these to go hike long distances, but if you're only going a few hundred meters, uh, they're very, very easy to throw on. Your foot just kind of goes through there and will allow you not to sink as much in the snow. Um, if you recall, I did that video of that poor, poor uh, snowmobiler who got trapped and how hard it was for everyone to uh, just traverse the 100 meters to and from him uh, to, go, to go get him. Uh, these help. These help a lot. So I always have a set with me. Uh, even though there's no snow here, there may be snow a thousand miles north of here. They're pretty simple. Again, I can fit them into my bag and they don't have big teeth that will uh, cut through my bag. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, like I said, I know it's uh, a little different than the other videos I've shown you, which is mostly just operational SAR stuff, but I thought I'd change things up other than, uh, you know, a repetitive uh, boat hoisting video. Cool, thanks for watching.